boys and girls and welcome to another lesson of science in daily life in the grade 9 classroom. I am Miss Raymond and I'm here to take you on a fun and exciting journey as we learn more about the teeth. Last session we would have talked a little bit about the difference between baby teeth and permanent teeth. We also differentiated between the types of teeth. Today however we're going to identify the different parts of a tooth and we're going to list the different ways in which we can care for our teeth and the gums. Now, what are the different parts of a tooth? Here, boys and girls, you can take a look at the image of a tooth. There are three parts to every tooth. There is the crown, the neck, and the root. Now, the crown is the portion above the gum line. The root is embedded in the gum and the neck is between the crown and the root. Here, boys and girls, let us also take a look at the interior anatomy of a tooth. You can see there is also the pulp. This is a soft interior cavity. There is a cementium, which is a thin bone layer covering or protecting the root. There is a dentin which is the solid, mostly bulky portion of the tooth. And there's also enamel, which is the hard covering on the exposed part of the tooth. Now, the part that you see in your mouth right now, boys and girls, is what we call the enamel. In the case of a cavity, that enamel wears away. And it gets to see where the dentin is, or the dentin is exposed. Once that is exposed and the cavity burrows down deeper, it reaches the pulp. And that's when you get all the pain possible from a toothache. Once the pulp is exposed, then you will be having a toothache. Now, let us talk a little bit about the gums. What is the gum? The gums are also called gingiva, or muscular tissues. It is coral pink in color. This soft tissue surrounds the teeth and forms a seal around it. Did you notice, boys and girls, between each tooth, you also have the gum is being placed there. Sometimes it's lower in some person or sometimes it's higher at the top for some persons. But between every tooth, the gum bridges the, the, that space or fills the gap. So the gum helps to seal that teeth or around the teeth area it's, it forms or it acts as a seal now massaging gums increases circulation and improves your gingiva health or the gum health receding gums which means that your gums keep getting higher and more of the, the tooth enamel is exposed or gum disease is responsible for nearly one third of all adult tooth loss Good gum health is essential to tooth health. So in order to have good teeth in your mouth, your gum must also be taken care of. Have you ever heard of the term oral hygiene? What is oral hygiene? Now, oral hygiene refers to the practice of keeping the mouth and teeth clean. This prevents problem involving the teeth or the gum that sometimes it even causes or reduce bad breath. Once or twice daily, brushing with a mild abrasive or flossing with a wax coated string is recommended. Simply saying, you must brush your teeth at least twice daily and flossing is always recommended. Proper use of a floss is advisable to you. Now, Brushing and flossing helps control the formation of dental plate, also called tartar. Have you ever noticed, boys and girls, at the corner of your, your teeth, there's some yellow substance there, and sometimes you might be brushing and brushing and brushing, but it does not go away. Now, that buildup there cannot be removed just like that or just by brushing. 
that hair is black and to take that off it's recommended to see a dental practitioner so dental plague is accumulated or an accumulation of mineral flim on the surface of the teeth it is usually colorless or it gets stained by the food or beverages that we use once it firms it must be removed by a professional and they use a scraping technique to take it off so boys and girls we can't just remove plaque from our mouth but i advise you to continue brushing and flossing your teeth now how many of you had experienced a tooth decay before is it painful yes it's very painful now what is tooth decay or how does our tooth decay now acid forming foods left on the teeth and mouth and tongue demineralize tooth enamels or damages our tooth enamel and this causes cavities or holes in our tooth the cavity will eventually expose the nerve filled pulp and cause pain the cavity must be drilled out clean and filled if we want to protect our tooth for further usage here boys and girls you can take an image of what a, a normal decay or cavity decay looks like here you can see the early stages and then it moves on and on until it infects the pulp that can be very painful how do we fix that by getting a filling done take a look at another image as we look at the filling process here you can see the tooth is decayed the decay is removed it's drilled it's clean and then it's left open like that in the same process a dental filling is put in the place of where that cavity was to prevent any further damage to the pulp or nerve endings of your tooth now how do we manage that we also have what is called tooth loss what is tooth loss it's the process in which one or more of your teeth come loose and falls out i am sure we have all experienced this at some point or the other growing as a child we maybe have we took a string tie it on our tooth and we we just yank it out or we had a, a sibling or a parent tie it to the doorknob close the door and our teeth came out or even as kids we take our finger we shake it and we just take it out of the gum our baby tooth that is so tooth loss is that process in which one or more of your teeth come loose and it falls out every person would go through some amount of tooth loss because you will lose your baby tooth or your male teeth to get your permanent teeth now how do we fix tooth loss in the case of an event where you're losing your permanent sets of teeth there are three ways in which we can fix that or replace a missing teeth or missing tooth here we have three ways one a dental bridge two implants and three dentures now what is a dental bridge a dental bridge is a false tooth that is held in place by the teeth around them on either side of that gap so here you can take a pitch a look at a picture of where you have a dental bridge being inserted in someone's gum you can see that the false tooth is placed there and it's just holding on on two of your actual teeth there next you have a dental implant now a dental implant is a metal post that replicates the root portion of a missing tooth an artificial tooth or crown is placed on the extension of that post and it makes it look like if it's a real tooth so basically what happened they put a nice metal post in the gum and then they put a cap over the metal post to make it look like it's an actual tooth that you have there good the last one that we have is called a denture and most of our elderly folks and our grandparents and uncles and aunts and so on may use dentures and a denture is a removable plate or frame holding one or more artificial teeth here you can see boys and girls a picture of a denture or a set of dentures now we have been talking a lot about teeth how to care for our teeth and in the event of if we lose our permanent teeth how do we fix that 
and we talk about having implants and dentures and so on. My advice to you boys and girls is for us to care our teeth by brushing and flossing and taking for every precaution we can so to avoid using any denture or implants and so on. This has brought us to the end of another informative lesson on parts of a tooth and the different ways in which we can care for our teeth. I am Miss Raymond and do join me again as we expand more on the digestive system. Bye-bye.